Okay, I'm going to try to make this go as quick as possible here. So I am starting on the first segment of notes where it says identifying wavelengths. Um, so I'm not going to write all the problems on the board, but I've got all the answers here, so I'll make sure I put those on there. Um, all right, so the pro first problem says each of the waveforms below are two meters in length, okay, from left to right. What is the wavelength of each of these waves? So when we're calculating the wave speed equations, one of the first things you're going to have to do is look at the standing waveforms, and you're going to have to be able to use the length of the string because it's not always going to be the wavelength. So we a lot of times have to write an expression that says that the wavelength is equal to this much of the length of the string. Okay, so if all of these are two meters in length, if we look at this waveform that is propagating back and forth in a standing wave pattern, and we'll talk about this tomorrow, but this, this on a string is called the, the resonance or the fundamental mode of vibration, okay? So the length of this string is exactly one half of a wavelength. So the L is equal to one half of lambda. So if we rearrange this, we can say that lambda is equal to two times the length of the string, okay? If we go down to the second one, notice that this is a perfect sine wave. You have your reflected wave that comes back through, so you have your standing wave pattern that's, that's oscillating back and forth. This is, is one complete wave cycle, so this one is easy. So length equals the wavelength, so we don't need to do anything fancy with that. Okay, so the L is equal to the lambda. Now, if we count the third one, we have a half a wave, one full wave, and then we have another half of a wave. So now the length of the string is equal to three halves of a wave, okay? So if we rearrange this to solve for wavelength now, same thing, just inverse it. So wavelength equals two thirds of the length, all right? And then the last one obviously is really, really easy. We have two complete waveforms here. So now the length is equal to two wavelengths or a wavelength is equal to one half of the length of the string. So if each one of these is two meters in length, if we go up to the first one, that means a wavelength is two times L, so a wavelength is four meters. Okay, the second one, since they're equal to each other, the wavelength is equal to two meters. On the third one, now we're going to have two-thirds of L, so this is equal to two-thirds of two, so this is 1.3 meters. And then the last one, the wavelength is half the length of the string, so lambda is equal to exactly one meter of length. Okay, so that's something, once again, you're going to have to do that several times as you're going through the problem. Okay, so let's use the next problem to kind of work on this. The next problem says a wave generator vibrates a three meter length string at 50 hertz, creating the wave in the diagram below. All right, we want to find the speed of the wave in this diagram. Okay, I'm not going to waste time here. Um, measuring this out or writing it on the board, I'm sorry. If we go through this waveform, you're gonna see that there is one, two, three, four, five halves of a wave, okay? So we already know that the length of this is equal to five halves of a wavelength, so once again, we can rearrange this, and the wavelength is equal to two-fifths of the length of the string, okay? So now we can go ahead and write our wave speed equation. V equals wavelength times frequency. And now we have our expression that we can drop in for the wavelength. So this equals 2 fifths L times F. Okay, so all we have to do now is just plug it in. 2 fifths of, what was the length again? 3 meters? Yeah. So 2 fifths of 3. And this is times a frequency of 50 hertz. So that is going to give me a wave speed of 60 meters per second. Okay, 
So once again, you're going to have to be able to use this so that you can figure out how much, how many waves are in per unit of length of the string, okay? And then just simply inverse it, and you can sub it right into the lambda, okay? All right, I'm going to move over to the sound notes. So speed of sound. And the first example problem says we have a 500 hertz tuning fork that vibrates at room temperature of 22 degrees Celsius. We want the wavelength of the sound wave. All right. So looking at this equation, V equals wavelength times frequency, we are solving for the wavelength. I have given you the frequency of 500 hertz. But what we're going to have to do is solve for the speed of sound in this room. Okay, so remember the equation for speed of sound is 331 meters per second plus 0 0.6 times the temperature in degrees Celsius, which I've given you this of 22.0. Okay, so when we get this and we calculate the speed of sound, we are going to get 344 meters per second. And now we can simply plug this into the equation. So 344 equals lambda times 500 hertz, where, sorry, I'm running out of room. Lambda is going to be 0 0.688 meters. Okay, so that, that sound wave, remember, and, and remember, these aren't transverse waves. Okay, these are compressions. So what's happening is the sound wave is going to have a region of compression. It's going to start propagating along the length of that wave as it moves outward. So we're talking about 0.7 meters or so between the compressions and the air molecules and that sound wave as it moves. Okay, so one more to go. All right, so I'm going to move on down to the speed of wave on a string and uh, we'll answer this question real quick and we'll be finished. So a stringed in instrument has a length of 80 centimeters and plays at the third harmonic frequency. We will discuss all of those things with fundamentals, harmonics, and overtones tomorrow. Okay, so the frequency is 240 hertz as shown in the diagram below. So once again, we'll have to look at the diagram based on the length of the string to get the wavelength. Okay, if a string has a linear mass density of 30 grams per meter, we want to find the tension in the string. Okay, so this is once again going to be a two-part problem here. Okay, so based on the diagram, we should see that we have three halves of a wave. Okay, so once again, the length is three halves of lambda, so that means lambda is two-thirds L. So the first thing we're going to do, since I gave you the frequency and the length of the string, let's go ahead and get the speed of the wave. So speed is wavelength times frequency. We will sub that in. So V is two-thirds L times frequency. So two-thirds times 0.8 meters and 240 hertz. And this is going to give me a wave speed of 128 meters per second. All right, so the next thing we want to do is solve for the tension. So we have our new equation here, V equals the square root of force tension over linear density. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to want to do is square this. So V squared equals force tension over linear density. Get rid of the square root. And now all I have to do is plug my numbers in. So I'm going to have 128 meters per second squared is going to equal force tension divided by, now, since we're using newtons to calculate this, that means everything's got to be in kilograms and meters and seconds. So I gave you a, a density of 30 grams per meter. We need to say 0 0.030. And then we can calculate the force tension by multiplying this over. So we end up with a tension in the string of 492 newtons. Okay, so there you go. That takes care of all the practice problems on today's notes. Hopefully, some of that at least made sense.